Hello, folks. Hello to those of you who are viewing this after we've been live, because you'll see this part where the other people do not. <laughs> We're waiting on folks to come out. Yes. Good morning. Thank you for your thumbs up Happy and your hearts. Happy Friday. Entering the weekend. Yes. Very pleasant outside this morning. Hello, Kent from down around Mobile. Blessings, brother. Hey, Tracy. Good morning to you as well. Hi, Jana. Good to see you over there in Red Bay. <laughs> Good morning, Gloria. Beautiful day the Lord has given us. I hope your day is going well and that uh, you're living the blessed life. Hey, Brittany, bless you. Jana, Hugh, good morning, brother. And Beverly, good morning to you. We are... Uh have on day four this week of our study about um, about being in Christ, and we've been in Ephesians one, yeah. and so we're talking about our identity and our sixteenth lesson mm -hmm. on identity. Hey, Rita, see you. Hey, Jay, blessings, Judy, and so hey, Sandra, bless you and Russell. We've got some thinking to do about how far we, how long we want to mm. continue this study on identity. If we're going to wrap it up after today, or so we'll talk about that in the next day or two. But I certainly enjoyed it, and obviously there's, hey Robin, obviously there we could spend another month easily just on identity passages. So we may do another week. We'll see. Betting about that. Yes, Susie and Gary, blessings to you today. Hope you've had a good week and anticipating the weekend. And I hope a lot of you will be able to join with us Sunday for worship outdoors at 8.30 at Grace House. And looking forward to that. Yeah. And be online at 10.30 if you miss it. Uh, outdoors at 8.30. But it looks like the weather's going to be great yeah. again at 8.30. It's going to be very nice mm -hmm. again. So probably one of our best days this yeah. coming Sunday weather-wise. If you got some friends you think might enjoy this study today, because we're going to be talking about being sealed by the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit's the earnest of our inheritance, I think it's going to be really good today. Uh, you can hit a share button there, I think, and actually yeah, share with your friends that we are live and invite them to come on board with us. So uh, maybe you haven't done that before, but... Um, so just, it should be just right figure, underneath our picture there. The little, little share button. little curvy arrow, and you can hit share and share it yeah. to your... Hey, Tommy. Oh, yes. Blessings. Hello, Todd. Blessings to you, brother. And it gives the opportunity to watch. They don't have to, but <laughs> they at least will have the opportunity to know that uh, they can. So we sure are uh, thankful for everyone that drops by and spends time with us. Well, are we about ready to go? I think we are. All right. Are you guys ready to roll? Okay. I'm taking that as a yes. <laughs> Thumbs up. Ready to go. Yeah. Well, as mentioned earlier, we continue our study of your identity in Christ. And oh my, how much ground we've already covered in Romans 8 and Ephesians 1. And uh, It's just wonderful what God's Word has to say about who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. And honestly, we've only skimmed the surface a little bit on just a few places in Scripture. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we don't know how long we'll continue this study um, whether we'll shift to another topic or not, but I'm excited about today. And again, we're in Ephesians chapter 1, and tell them what our declaration would be today about their identity in Christ. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're studying today. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. And yes. we can talk about what that means. Yeah, and to, to say it's one thing, but to say it and know what it means and get the revelation mm -hmm. of it, it's a very helpful truth in Scripture. So why don't you share this? We've been going through Ephesians 1, and we made our way down to um, verse 13. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, 
in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Amen. So there's two different main topics we're going to get out of this. And the first one is that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And Paul begins this passage by saying in him, you you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And Mm -hmm. gospel, euangelion, good news, where we get the word evangelize. It's good news. The the message of the church is good news. Mm -hmm. Uh, Does that mean there's no bad news? Well, the bad news is if you refuse to receive the good news, (laughs) because that's not good if you die having not given your life to Christ. So, but it's good news to know that your sins can be forgiven. You can be reconciled with God, adopted into his family. All the things we've been studying mm-hmm. about what the benefits of his finished work and what that means to us and, and what it means to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Our, our identity is shifted. We're sons of God. We're the bride of Christ. Uh, we've been made worthy. We're qualified, made righteous, and so forth. And today, this beautiful picture says that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit. He says, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So this gives us a key. When we're talking about this being sealed with the Holy Spirit, it takes place when you believe. He said, after you believed, you were sealed. So you believed, and then after that, you look back and you can say, I was sealed. Mm -hmm. You were sealed when you believed. So what does that mean? So let's look, first of all, at this... um, Greek word, uh, strazidzo. That's a, that's a hard one to say. <laughs> but the word uh, for sealed. Yeah. So the the word for sealed. Go ahead. Yeah. It it's, it it means. I can say the English one. Yeah. I'm not to to Greek set, one. <laughs> no, I mean just the meaning of the word to set a seal upon, and it it was uh, used in ancient times and still today in similar ways. A seal would be uh, like a king would take a signet ring and seal it, or he would have a scepter with uh, imprimatur on it that he would seal documents. And so I, we thought we would just illustrate it for you. And so, this is very simple ways, but we send things by envelope today in paper. And mm-hmm. in Bible times, they would use vellum, like sheepskin or papyri, where they would take papyrus plant, crush them up and make a a very uh, archaic form of paper compared to what we have now. But they would would be able to write on it. They would take a quill of a pen, dip it Mm -hmm. in ink, Mm -hmm. uh, and they would uh, put a message on that papyrus. Then they would roll it up. And much like we would use an envelope, I've got here this like it's a legal document, say, inside of this. They would then take a, a candle, like the wax of a candle, and you can see... Here, the the flame's about gone out, and I'm going to take and I'm going to pour this wax across this envelope. Well, I'm not level here, so (laughs) and I'm pouring it here. Yeah, I'm pouring it here, and you can see that. Now I'm going to let this dry or begin to dry. Let me hold it. Yeah, yeah. At a certain point, I'll blow it there. At a certain point, uh, as it begins gets just right, then the king or the, the, the legal official, he would take his ring and press in it, or he would take a little, uh, 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 See, like a small like, scepter yeah. with an official thing on it, and push it where, where the document seals together, push it and leave his imprimatur, his mark, his branding, and it would be so low to him, it would be just his alone. <laughs> and as a result, you can see there uh, that that envelope is sealed along the seam, and it's in it, and, and say that was my imprimatur. Uh, if this has been tampered with, if it's being delivered to someone, if it's tampered with, you could tell it. If that envelope was open, that seal would break. So it guaranteed. That seal would guarantee that what's in that document had been sealed by the person who made the document, whose word, whose promise, whose legal contract it contains. So, in other words, you know this is not a forgery. Oh, that only the king has that ring. Only the king has that imprimatur. No one else has that. And so 
it, it would do certain things. And so let's talk about some of the things that uh, the seal would represent in, in legal terms. Well, it, it attests to the authenticity of what's inside. Yes. And, and so also the, the seal itself, you can, you know, has an authentic, there was an authentic seal that you could identify as belonging to yes. the king or this, whoever sent it. it. It attests to the fact that this document that's been sealed was done by the hand that held that scepter or that branding, if you would, or the signet ring. Uh, in other words, you've got a message from the king. Only the king who had kept this on his person could have done that. So he's saying, this is from me. It attests, <laughs> it attests, this is authentic. It is from me. And that's the way you would know. And so what else would it do? Well, it would uh, authorize. It would give, you know, whatever is inside and the message. You, you, it was authorized by the king and might authorize you to do something or have the permission, whatever the legal document I had inside. That's exactly right. The contents of that document, because it was sealed and you're the one that broke the seal and saw it with your eyes, you know that that's an authorized message, that whatever it says, you have the authority to take it uh, 100% as true and accurate as from the king. Mm -hmm. And we'll apply all this to what it means by the Holy Spirit sealing us mm -hmm. in just a moment. Just like we have the Bible is God's, uh, and the Holy Spirit bears witness with that, it's from the Lord. Uh, it, it authorizes us to do what it says. Absolutely. And um, it, ta it also speaks of accessibility. Yes. So, yeah. you know, if you send me a message, then I have access to you. You have access, you're giving that message to me. Yes, whatever the king authorizes in that document, if it's sent to you and the message is for you, and it spells out for you what you can now do by uh, decree of the king, then now you have accessibility to all the king provides to make sure that message of that promise is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about accountability. Yeah. Yeah, that's the side we maybe don't think about as much, but... Uh, you know, you got the God side of it, but the accountability is having been sealed, you know, we're having received this. Now we're accountable with how we respond to this, mm -hmm. how we handle this, what we do with this. So that's some, there's some beautiful pictures there mm -hmm. in the specific word that Paul uses to fix, to set a seal upon. And he says, when you believed, God set a seal upon you, fixed a seal upon you. And we're told what the seal was. The Holy Spirit. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of promise. I yes, like that part. yes. And so this is awesome. It ties in some of the stuff we've already studied. That when you were saved and the Holy Spirit came to indwell you, we saw in Romans 8 that when he came to live in us, that he began to say, Abba. Papa. In other words, you belong to God the Father. You are now a child of God. The Holy Spirit's witness. We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit himself. Sent from God, bearing witness, bearing the image of God within us, literally. And we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of God promise. Mm. The Holy Spirit was the promise of the Father. Jesus says to his disciples, if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit, the comforter will not come. And he even said, it's to your advantage that I go back to the Father because when I do, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will come. And when you believe the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you and attests Authentically, you are now a child of God. You know you are because His Spirit is now dwelling in you. You now have authority because you're a member of the royal family. Uh, you're authorized to live life as God's child in the earth. You have access to God the Father uh, through the blood of Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And you are now accountable to God because you have been bought with a price and you are not your own. You are to glorify God with your body and your spirit which are God. So, I mean, it's a sealed deal, if you will, mm -hmm. a legal binding transaction that's take place, ratified by the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit of promise now living within us. And 
That's a beautiful, beautiful truth. So we could say that even as the enemy, you know, comes uh, toward us or whatever, that the ev- you know we have that evidence that we belong to God because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Yes, and you know, in the mouth of two witnesses, this thing is established. We have the spoken word of God that gives us the gospel message, tells us what to do when we respond to God, tells us what God does for us. In addition to that. Uh, then we have the Spirit of God who comes in and dwells us and bears witness Mm -hmm. that the Word of God now, that promise in the Word has now been fulfilled in our life. We are indeed now uh, bearers of His very own Holy Spirit. And Mm -hmm. you know what this tells me? If a king sends you something like this Mm -hmm. and it's sealed, he wants you to know this is the king. What this says is from the king, and it is for you. And for those who joined late, because I've seen some of you logging on, that's melted wax, and then he just put a stamp inside it, and you know, he used to seal the contents. Seal contents. Um, back in the days the Bible was written, they would put wax, and then the ring would, the king's ring would. Mm-hmm imprinted or or whoever it was sealed by so in case you can't tell what that is <laughs> and if that seal was broken you know that it had been tampered with right but if it was untampered with and it had that imprimatur of the king on there you knew this was from the king mm. and so all this really just screams to us from scripture god wants you to know that you belong to him believer and there a lot of warfare over that in our life do I really know him? Does he really know me? Am I saved? You know, a lot of people struggle with it. The Lord wants you to know that you belong to him. He sealed you with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. of promise. And so it's like when you first get saved, he gives you that in, intrinsic and empirical evidence mm-hmm. within that something has happened uh, you know, you have peace. When you get saved, you feel the burden lifted, the mm-hmm. guilt's gone. Only the blood of Christ can do that, disempower guilt. The consciousness of sin, that you, that fog's lifted, and you realize me and God are on good terms. I'm reconciled. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit tells you, He's now my Father. Uh, the Lord wants you to know. Yeah. Who you are. This is this is the whole mm-hmm. message about identity. We need to know who we are, whose we are. And the Lord wants us to know. So I believe as we teach these things, the Holy Spirit within us will even say, yes, yes, bear witness with this. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And that itself tells us that the promises are, are realized when we are living our life knowing we're in Christ. You know, that's where your faith's going to be its strongest because you know it's not you, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's very important to know that that you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Um, Then you can have faith and confidence as you're encountering life and and as you're praying, and it just makes a lot of difference. Think about what Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes. He comforts, Mm -hmm. He guides, He revelatory in a revelatory way, he can show us things to come. He uh, bears witness to the truth. He guides us into truth. Uh, all these things begin to happen in us because the Lord wants to lead us and guide us and know that we are His. Let's talk about the word here for promise when it says uh, that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise because it has some really beautiful meanings yeah. inside it. Uh, it's, yeah, I shared this one out of the this word study. A promise that literally announces what is fitting or what is appropriate. And then uh, it goes on to talk about another meaning is it's nearly, and it's almost always used talking about God's promises. And therefore, those promises are backed up by God's own eternal law. So it's our promise 
as a human might be one thing, but God's promise yeah. is... They rest on the eternal. They, they rest on the eternal. And then it's a legal term that yeah. refers to an officially sanctioned promise. So mm. when we say we're standing on the promises or we're declaring the promises, we're not just... It's not just some mamby bamby uh emotional whatever but we are literally standing on the foundation of a sure promise from god who is immutable his word cannot be changed his promises cannot be changed and and how applicable that is and how relevant that is to everyday life as long as i am standing in the place he told me to stand if you think about it, sons are led by the Spirit of God. So if we're just being led by Him and we're, we're where He tells us to be, we're standing where He tells us to stand, that's the safest place you can stand mm-hmm. um, because the Lord backs it up, mm-hmm. His promises. And that's, that's good. And this word promise is sometimes even used in the sense of being summoned. And again... Like uh, if you're summoned to court, I mean, that's a legal thing. Like uh, you're being called. So if you don't show up, there's a penalty. I mean, and the, these promises are it, the promises are God calling us into some type of action, calling us into a place, into belief, into mm-hmm. faith, into assurance. And so we, when we respond to that, mm-hmm. then uh uh, it, it means we're more sure-footed. We're more stable in our life because we're standing on the promise. Mm. I like that old song, standing on the promises of God. You know, And, and then uh, New Testament scripture, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, powerful to rest our life on the promises of God and being sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Promise. Yeah, and that's not all. Because no, when we get to verse 14, he talked about... It actually just gets better. Yeah, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who who is, is referencing the Holy Spirit of mm-hmm. promise? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory? Now notice here... Again, yesterday we talked about how Paul sometimes gave us these big picture ideas. Mm -hmm. We see that again here in verses 13 and 14. Whom you first believed, after what you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance and until the redemption of the purchase possession. So you believe you were sealed. And being sealed then stands as the guarantor of something you've not yet received, the purchase possession. So all of these terms are pregnant with meaning and uh, exciting for us because it shows, again, how God is working in our life, how God is active, God's taken the initiative, what he's done through the cross and what he continues to do now by his spirit. This word guaranteed in, in the KJV who talks about the earnest of our inheritance. It's a beautiful word. And that idea is really packed with meaning because most of us understand uh, earnest money yeah. or paying down uh, uh, earnest. Let's say we bought a house and we, we give earnest money mm-hmm. and that is a promise of all the rest of the payment that is to come. Yeah. Uh, you know, so God gives us the Holy Spirit as an earnest of our inheritance uh, and it's, that's just an amazing thought. And thinking about the Holy Spirit himself is mm-hmm. the uh, God's earnest mm-hmm. to us, God's guarantee to us, the, an advance payment. And usually the, the portion that, that's given up front, more of the same, the total, the sum mm-hmm. and all of the same will be given at a later time. There's, it's a guarantee in the sense I'm putting this, this is down money, earnest money, advanced money. Uh, and it, this is the guarantee that I'm saying you're going to get everything else that was promised before, it, before it's over. Oh, that'll preach. Yeah. And so <laughs> the fact that he's already given you his Holy Spirit is God's own guarantee that everything else he's promised you is a coming your way. 
uh, the best is yet to come. Yeah. Here, his direct reference is the guarantee of the purchased possession. The purchase goes back to the idea of ransom, redemption, um, the sense of Jesus' blood became the ransom, became the purchase price, if you will, for our redemption. His death, his burial, his resurrection, we get everything that he that he went through to procure for us. In other words, this purchase possession means, yes, we will also be given. Even uh, beyond death, we have the guarantee we will be given a glorified, resurrected body. It will be spiritual. It will be supernatural. It will be, uh, but yet it will be a, a material body uh, in, in the sense, not a fallen earthly carnal body, but it will be a body like Jesus had after the resurrection. Um, we might correctly say it'll uh, be a body uh, what, like Adam had before the fall but, and even beyond that, mm. because I believe. Um, so we're guaranteed that through the blood of Jesus and, and, and the Holy Spirit of promise whom we have because of Jesus' death on the cross and our faith in him and what he procured there. The Holy Spirit is a living testimony within us of the fact that there's more to come, the purchase. And that's to the praise of His, his glory. glory. It's all about God being glorified, His eternal purposes being fulfilled, His original mandate being uh, carried out like He originally declared it would be. Uh, man, man sinned, but Jesus came to redeem and God's will would be done. And uh, those of us who are the believing ones experience all this because we are in Christ. We enter into the efficacy and the benefits that he in his sinless perfection attained and in his all-sufficient sacrifice procured for us. And the Holy Spirit is God's imprimatur in our life and God's guaranteed to us of the, the purchase possession. Amen. Amen. And it's, I can feel that. <laughs> so as we uh, experience the Holy Spirit, we can be reminded that that we uh, He is the promise of yes. all that God has for us. Yes, and don't you let any two-legged devil tell you, a believer, child of God, that you are not valued by your heavenly Father and that you have not been made worthy by the blood of mm -hmm. Jesus. And don't let any demonic spirit or any carnal nature operating uh, suppress uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit within you that, that will bear witness with you that you belong to the Lord. There's a lot of warfare against us, mm -hmm. not living out of our identity that Christ, uh, a, a being in Christ. But that's how we're called to be sons and we're called to be led by the Spirit who is the earnest of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's other elements of being allowing the Holy Spirit to have such full control of our life that those gifts start operating where we receive the baptism, the empowerment, the enablement. Mm -hmm. And you see, I'm not one of those that, that thinks that once you get saved, then you 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 may have all the Holy Spirit, you know, but you don't have all that he's offering you operating in your life. Uh, so uh, there's always more. No matter how much you've grown, no matter what you've experienced, there's always more. The best is always coming your way. You have the whole purchase possession that Christ has promised. You know this word promise, again, that going back to the previous, it, it usually is a, a reference and um, and even here this uh, it's always a pointing back to like the Old Testament. Most of the New Testament promises, uh, a lot of them are given to us out of prophetic promises of the Old Testament. That's true. And it's like those promises were pointing to a time when God would do something that was far superior to that they had never experienced. He'll write the law of God. You'll have a new heart, you know, uh, his spirit will be poured out on all flesh. It was looking to that time. And we get to the, the New Testament era, and now we're told on this side, now we have a new covenant, new promises, 
a new covenant, new legal document contract based on better promises than those old ones. The old ones pointed to the new ones coming. The new ones tell us that we what we have is better than what was in the old. Mm-hmm. And part of the new tells us, and you haven't got yet all that you are promised that you're going to get. Just Good keeps stuff. on rolling, keeps mm-hmm. on coming. Doesn't mean you don't have trials, tribulations, mm-hmm. warfare, and struggle. But these truths will help us in those times if we'll remember those. Absolutely. Thinking about where, you know, that scripture that says David strengthened himself in the Lord. And I was thinking about how, uh, you know, accessing the Holy Spirit inside us is a way to strengthen ourselves, you know, by praying in the Spirit, by, you know, just uh, allowing Him to reveal His Word to us and spend time Mm -hmm. in worship and just experience the leading of the Holy Spirit and His presence. Uh, that that's a way to be strengthened mm, in God. That's so good. And we haven't even dipped our little toe into all that John taught in his first John. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you, he says, you have an, an unction, an anointing from the Holy One. You need no man to teach you. In other words, even the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. He's our, he's our real teacher. Mickey and I, we're teaching but it's the Holy Spirit that, that gives that revelatory truth that's, you know, bearing witness that really feeds us. And, mm-hmm. and He's with us at all times. He'll guide us in all truth. And uh, I always like to tell people, let's be like the Bereans to search the Scriptures to see if those things you're being taught are so. And also the Holy Spirit will bear witness with the Word He wrote. Yes. And so, uh, you know, we did a whole, I forgot how many sessions on the manifest presence of the Spirit. And it, this just all ultimately ties together, you know, yes. all about how much God loves us and what He's done for us. And we need to live to the praise of His glory as this verse ends. That's a good, good uh, way to end that up today, yeah. living to the praise of His glory. Yes. And we will be back here tonight at 7 o'clock for communion and for uh, time in the Word. Mm-hmm. And some people have even called this uh, season a great communion revival yeah. as people are enjoying communion and standing on the promises of God and uh, seeking Him for all that He, you know, His protection, His blessing, and leading them into the promised land. So yes. uh, to join us tonight for communion and right here at 7 o'clock. Yeah, and on Sunday morning, uh, if you're not attending anywhere, we actually have an old... Um, um, an outdoor uh, worship uh-huh. service uh, at Grace House in our parking area at eight thirty on Old Sunday. Oh, Tommy, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I've been studying today because I'm going to be preaching the message for Sunday later today, and I'm thinking about uh, what's on my heart is is about the Ark of the Covenant. There's some things there I think uh, the Lord's talked to me about a clear message for mm-hmm. confusing times and. And I got to thinking about, you know, in the Old Testament, they always worshiped outside. Mm-hmm. You know, only the high priest could go behind the Holy Holies and only the priest could go in the inner temple. And it was just pretty much the, out, the outside court. And uh, anyway, I've been enjoying these outdoor worship services. We're able to gather together. We're connect. You know, we, we want to do the things in the natural uh, that we can be. So we're social, socially distancing. And when you're in particularly indoor and crowded places, you know, you need to wear a mask and uh, and and then, you know, wash your hands. We all need to be good citizens and good examples and try to do those things. Um, but we, we're still worshiping, you know. Mm-hmm. We're worshiping here today, and we're worship- we get together outside. That's the safest place we can worship right now, according to, you know, just in the natural. And so we're doing that and really enjoying it. It looks like the weather may be in our favor again oh, this no, Sunday. We had a great sense. time last Sunday. God's been so yeah. sweet on the, the worship. Weather. We've the had worship amazing, is, is, oh, it was good Sunday. We had yeah. a really good day Sunday. Yeah. You know, we are the church, our body, the temple of the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. It's not about uh, brick walls being on mm-hmm. a certain side of the brick wall. I mean, for so long, the church, you know, our message has been, we need to get outside the walls. Well, we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're enjoying it because he's worthy. And, uh, you know, we you can decide to complain about what's not the way you want it to be. Or you can just keep your eyes on Jesus and just be determined. I'm going to worship him in, out, up, down, dark, light, day, night. Inside, inside outside. outside. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Amen. All right. See you back here tonight at 7. Yeah. So good to see you. And God bless you. We love you.